Hey, what's good? It's your boy Dundeal. Welcome to my episode of In The Cut. Come on in. Yeah, man. Shit. This right here, some plaques. You know, you gotta have your trophies. This is my platinum with uh, Trey Songs. This right here is Stoner, my first plaque. This is, uh, this is my artwork. I like Rick and Morty a lot. That's probably my favorite cartoon right now. Albert Einstein, respect because he's smart. Jimi Hendrix, first black rock and roller. For real, for real. And uh, yeah, this is my friend. This is my producer right here, She Fab, my boy. My other boy, Chris Beats, Costa Nostra. And we just, uh, you know, kicking it, playing video games, smoking weed. Same old shit. The fact that I started with Young Thug almost 2008, it took forever for him to blow. Like that was, that was the person I had put all my chips into and it took forever. So it took the years of staying in the studio with him when nobody else believed in him and, and really putting my heart and soul into making sure that we did something that people would know about. I mean, other than that, the, the countless hours in the studio, the consistency of making all the beats, recording, I was an engineer for years. Um, I'm just thankful that the time that I put into it actually worked out. I am both. I, I can't say either or because I put, I put a lot of time into learning how to make money off of music. I, I used to work at Guitar Center, and even working in Guitar Center, I was an entrepreneur. I was putting together plays of people that were getting the studio equipment and telling them, hey, I know how to make beats. That's how I ended up with my first studio. My everyday life, I wake up, I, uh, I like to set aside 20 minutes of just no phone, no nothing, meditate, get my mind together for the day, and um, once I really put everything together, you know, set, set out for what I want to do, I make sure that I get shit done. That's my everyday. And then I get to relax and play some video games. But I say to myself, like, if I can make, if I can get up and make 10 beats today, if I can get up and, you know, go to the gym, it's doing something that is out of the norm for everybody else. So I like to work and, and get things done myself, accomplish. I am a weed connoisseur. I have been smoking weed for, since 2004. 2000, well, realis realistically, I've been smoking weed every day since 2004. I've been smoking weed since 1998. You gotta think about how old I was. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm 31 right now. So I've been smoking weed since I was like 12. Every, <laughs> 12, 13. Uh, blackberry, gelato. Let me get the blackberry and gelato. Yeah, I need a pen. Yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, so, I'm from Cali. You know what I'm saying? Um, from, from Cali to Arizona, from Arizona to Atlanta. I've been living out here since... I've been living out here for 17 years now. The first time I ever smoked weed, and if my mom ever hears this, sorry. The first time I ever smoked weed was at my aunt's house, um, cause she had like a roach. Like, you know them things that the ashtrays with all the little things you stick in there? Like they used to, weed used to be rolled up so skinny you couldn't even, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it used to be like little skinny, skinny pieces of weed. And so one day I just, I thought I was smoking a cigarette. I didn't know what I was smoking. And my boy was like, man, let's get this. Come on, come on. And I was like, all right. And we went out to the back and, and I smoked it. And after that I was, they say weed ain't addictive, but that's a lie. I'm addicted. I love it. It's my everyday go-to. 
you know, gets the stress up off my back. Makes me feel good. I was on probation for like eight months one time. That was like the worst time of my life. Couldn't smoke. So, I'm all about smoking weed. People that want to know if the pins are overrated or underrated, I'd have to say the pins are underrated. Because, no, they're good for, for me, I'd be smoking them in the movie theater. I'd be smoking them at the theme parks. You know what I'm saying? I, nigga, I done smoked them, what, church? I done smoked them in a courtroom before. Oh, you smoked one on a plane? Yeah, I smoked one on a plane. I've gone in the bathroom, like, I ain't, uh, I ain't playing with this shit, man. Weed is serious to me. I do this shit, so I be, you know, when you, when you need a, you ever been too sober, nigga, get one of these. I be too sober sometimes, and I be like ready to just smoke a blunt. You be with your family and shit. <laughs> And, and your grand and your grandma want to talk right. They want to talk to you about Jesus for for 20 hours, and it's cool. I love God. Yeah, they don't know what the fuck you smoking. It's hookah. It could be anything. My dad, he know what's up though. He want to smoke that shit. He waiting to goddamn retire so he can get high. Can't tell y'all what his name. Is. <laughs> This is my little secondary bedroom right here. I turned into a, my cook-up room. I like to get the vibes, big ass bean bag, you know, keep my shit on the wall. But yeah, man, cooking up in here. <laughs> get all my ideas out early as I can like I don't even like to if the beat doesn't turn into anything for me I skip it and go on to the next one um, but sometimes when I skip it and I go back to it like this is a beat I did earlier and when you go back to it it's still like got the potential that you want then you just have a different ear when you're listening to it sometimes it ends up better Before I remember like when I used to do shit, I used to not take the time to, to mix the instruments like I wanted to. I've been, I've been playing keys for maybe six months now. Um, I've recently just started taking piano classes. So now I'm starting to get it. I understand it more. Before when I was doing music, I did it more off the of field. Now I kind of understand the technical side and it, and it helps me out a lot more. the easiest thing you're going to do, um, but those instruments, it's just like, they could, you could do whatever, that's what makes it different. That be going like 
All those complicated, sophisticated sounding beautiful beats, they good, but niggas be wondering, bro, what's that shit at, bro? I never make beats with people in mind. I started off making beats for myself, so whenever I come up with beats, I usually do it from things that I think. Like the beat for Stoner, when I did that, it was already called Stoner. The beat was called Stoner by itself. I, I had the idea of what I wanted to hear on it. And, uh, you know, that's how it should be. I've been producing with a lot of people, though, lately, so when I produce with other people, they usually have people in mind. Maybe I should do that. I will never sell a beat online. It never had. Yeah, there's a reason, but it comes with a business plan in mind for, for myself, so I don't know if I want to give it away without having it, everything in order. I mean, I just feel like producers need a union. They need to be unionized because if you do a beat and it goes number one and you got $200 for it and nothing else, I mean... Yeah, people will come to you because you got a number one, but you miss out on a number one that you possibly could never get again. So, I don't know. I feel like people should smarten up when it comes to selling beats online and protect their rights instead.